Hello, this is Dr. Viv again for the third and final part of this uh, sample exam review. Um, the long problem example 3 has a block of mass M that starts um, over here and then it slides down the hill and then over another hill like that and at the top of the small hill um, the normal force uh, it exerts is what we need to find. We need to find the normal force here. Okay, um, we are told that it starts from rest, so the velocity here is zero. Um, to find the normal force at this point, you need to find the speed at this point first, because then we can use Newton's second law on a circular path to find the normal force. So let's first find the speed at this point. I'll call this the initial point and I'll call this the final point. Uh, because this uh, track is frictionless, we can use the principle of mechanical energy conservation between the initial and the final points. So the total mechanical energy at the initial point is equal to the total mechanical energy at the final point. Let's write that down. Here it's just gravity. So um, going to be mg times capital H and on this side it's going to be gravity plus some uh, kinetic energy let's call that speed V there uh, so it's going to be kinetic energy which is one half mv squared plus um, the gravitational potential energy with respect to this dotted line here um, it's mgh uh, you notice that the mass cancels out um, and so we can find the uh, speed v squared is going to be um, I'll, um, uh, it's going to be g times h minus h times 2 that's the speed I'll leave it as speed squared uh, and I'll, I'll uh, you'll soon see why I do that I don't bother solving for v I'll just leave it as v squared so this is going to be 2g they've told us what uh, little h is well actually they've told us what um, the total is what capital H is, so let's put that in. It's 5h over 4 minus little h, so that's going to be 5 quarters minus 1 is 1 quarters, so that's 2gh over 4, or it's just gh over 2. Um, so that's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem. And, and these are parts I'm deciding on my own um, for analysis, um, is the circular motion part. At the top of the circle, the free body diagram uh, looks as follows. Normal force is on top. Uh, there's uh, gravity. Now, gravity has always got to be a slightly bigger here because if it has to go in a circle, without losing contact, um, there needs to be what's called a centripetal acceleration towards the center of that circle. And so we do need to have gravity to be slightly bigger than the other force, the normal force. So let's write Newton's second law, sum of all the forces in the negative radial direction. Uh, radial direction is r hat, and so the negative radial direction is negative r hat and that's equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. Well, that's what Newton said. So the sum of all the forces in the negative r hat direction means the forces in the negative r hat direction get positive sign. And that is not in the negative r hat direction, so that gets a negative sign, is equal to mass times uh, centripetal acceleration is v squared over the radius which in this case is just little h because it's the radius of that circle. Now let's solve this for Fn. Um, this gives me Fn is equal to Fg, which is mg, minus mv squared over h. And uh, uh, I earlier promised you that um, I would not take the square root and the reason for that is this. I can just take v squared from there and substitute it here. So that's going to be mg minus m over h v squared, and that is gh over 2. 
you notice the H cancels out and that's just mg minus half mg which is mg over 2. So that's a cute little problem. Um, it's algebraic so there are no numbers to deal with. Um, the next problem is also algebraic. It's a multiple level or concept problem. You have three stages here. Um, the object first descends and then uh, after uh, descending it gets some speed. Um, so first of all you need to find out what the initial speed is because they've given you just a normal force here. So just like in the previous problem you have to solve the Newton second law part first get the speed at this point we'll call that vi uh, actually i'm just calling it v1 because there are so many stages here and when it comes over here the speed is going to be v2 and then finally when it stops at the friction patch the final speed is zero so it travels some length l before stopping okay so that's these are the three stages of the problem so the first stage is just the again these stages are something that i uh, invent myself for convenience. So Newton's second law in the negative radial direction is what we're going to look at first. That's Fn. Uh, remember the Fg has to be bigger because it's got to have a centripetal acceleration like that and that's the speed v1. So Newton's law can be uh, written Newton's law is sum of all the forces in the negative r hat direction equals mass times the centripetal acceleration. So it's Fg minus um, Fn is equal to mv1 squared divided by r, the radius of the, the hill. Um, the force of gravity is mg. And the force of norm, normal force is given to be mg over 4. So I have here um, mv1 Oh wait, there, this is a collision. I didn't realize that. So there's, this block comes down and then collides with this block. So that's the that's the first phase, um, then there's a second phase where it comes down, then there's a third phase when it collides, and then there's a fourth phase when it, so it's a four phase problem, not a three phase problem. I, I just didn't realize that, uh, I re just now lo looked at the color and saw it was black and that's gray. So anyway, let's um, uh, solve this first. Uh, this is going to be m times uh, uh, v1 squared divided by r. So mg minus quarter mg is three quarters mg. The mass cancels out and this gives me v1 squared equals three quarters gr. I'll just leave it like that. Um, you saw in the previous problem there was no need to take the square root. It's the same here also. And now we'll consider the descent. Now, uh, when it descends, you're going to have the potential energy there is going to be converted to kinetic energy. So, um, potential energy plus kinetic energy is going to be converted to just pure kinetic down here. So, I'll just write um, 1 half mv1 squared plus um, mgr is equal to 1 half m. So let's call the speed after collision when two blocks are stuck together. Let's call that V3. Okay. Um, so the speed before collision is V2. Let's cancel out the amps. Uh, V1 squared is 3 quarters GR. So that's the, um, let me first multiply the whole thing by 2. So I get V1 squared plus 2 GR equals V2 squared. And now I'll substitute. Now I'll substitute from here. 
Um, so this gives me V2 squared equals V1 squared, which is 3 quarters GR plus 2 GR. Uh, well, um, we'll have to take common denominator there. 2 can be written as um, 8 over 4. Um, so that gives me 8 plus 3, 11 over 4 GR. And I'll leave it like V2 squared. The third uh, step is the collision. The initial momentum, uh, sum of the initial momentum in the x direction is equal to sum of the final momentum in the x direction. The initial momentum is just the mass little m with that speed v2, velocity v2, and that's equal to the final momentum. They stick together, so it's going to be the other one is 3m, so m plus 3m or 4m times the final speed, which is v3, the velocity, which is v3. So this gives me v3 is equal to 1 quarter v2. And I'm going to just square this. v3 squared equals 1 16th v2 squared. Um, <clears throat> So uh, I guess I'll just leave it like that for now and then go on to the friction patch. Uh, in the friction patch, uh, all you have is the work done by friction equals the change in kinetic energy. So that part is uh, pretty straightforward. The work done by the force of kinetic friction is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the combined object. The work done by the force of friction is negative force of friction kinetic times the length it travels times cosine of 180. Actually, that negative sign comes from the cosine of 180 degrees, so I will not write that. Uh, and that's equal to 1 half m uh, v final squared. This is total mass minus 1 half m total uh, v initial squared. The final uh, speed is 0 because it has stopped. And uh, cosine 180 is a negative sign, so that cancels the negative sign there. The force of kinetic friction is mu kinetic times the normal force, which is equal to the total mass times gravity. And that's equal to 1 half mt uh, vi squared, the initial velocity, which is really v3 in this case, squared. Total mass cancels out, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's solve for the length, which is really what we are after. So that's v3 squared divided by 2 mu k g. That's it. So now we have to sort of track back and substitute for all these things. So let's go do that. v3 squared is uh, 1 16th v2 squared. So that gives me 16 times 2 is 32. So 1 32nd uh, v2 squared over mu k g. Uh, next, v2 squared is equal to 11 fourths gr. So that gives me 1 32nd times 11 fourth gr over mu kg. You observe that g cancels, so it's uh, valid on any planet, basically. Um, and that's your answer, it looks like. 11 divided by uh, 128. We are looking answer, but notice it has the right units. Mu k has no units, and the units of length are meters, and the units of radius are meters. So at least units-wise, I believe that answer. Well, thanks for watching. That has been the review of the second test in practice exam in three parts.